Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, this is Mike Iderola with Information Management Services speaking, and I wanted to welcome you all to our presentation today that's going to be basically uh, monitored by um, the gentleman John Paul Castro from Access, uh, which is the software developer for one of our software products called Formata. And along with John, uh, Chris Powell from one of our partners, Cornell Imaging, will, who is a product specialist, will be joining us as well. Uh, during the webinar today, everybody's uh, phone will be on mute, so we will be asking if you can direct any questions to us through the chat box. It will, uh, we'll collect them all, and we'll answer them later on in the presentation. Uh, just uh, by way of introduction, John uh, comes to, uh, to the to this presentation with a lot of background in uh, eForms. Uh, the company Access is uh, the developer of a product called Formata, and gentleman has been with them for a number of years. Uh, Formata has been in the electronics form business for 15 years, so there's a tremendous amount of uh, experience and background they have, and we're looking forward to sharing that information with you today. So John, if you could uh, take it from here, uh, we'll sit back and listen to the presentation. Excellent. Well, thank you very much, Mike. And uh, I look forward to talking uh, to everybody. And uh, certainly uh, go ahead and start sending questions uh, as soon as they pop into your mind. So uh, you know, the first thing I wanted to mention is so many people talk about electronic forms. And it means different things to different people. Uh, for example, if you have a PDF on your website and somebody can download that, and that, that can uh, be considered a, uh, an electronic form. Or if you scan something and send it through an email, that can maybe be considered uh, distributing it electronically. What we're talking about with the Formata solution is eliminating the paper process. So from the time somebody launches uh, a form to the time it's sent to the content management system, Everything is electronic. So we're able to actually, in fact, we're even able to capture the information on the form and send that to databases. And I think the real thing about the Formata solution is we fill all the gaps that, you know, currently you may have a PDF or you may uh, send something through email. We actually fill all those other gaps. For example, what if you're, what if you're accessing a form via a mobility device? Uh, what if you're uh, accessing a form uh, from a PC? So all of, that, all of that can be accomplished uh, electronically. As uh, you know, Mike had mentioned, we, we've been in business for over 15 years. We actually have a history going back uh, beyond that as well. But uh, you know, really, when we're talking about the Formata solution, we're talking about a, a paperless data collection tool. So you're capturing information onto the form, and that's usable discrete data. And you can send that to databases. Uh, the other thing is that in our solution, we also include the design tool. And I think what you'll find with our solution is that the design tool doesn't require a .NET programmer or, or somebody ha who has uh, JavaScripting skills. And more or less, you know, somebody who has a uh, Microsoft Word, Excel, PowerPoint can do a lot of uh, a lot of the uh, forms design with uh, you know those simple skill sets. This is just an example of uh, our our vertical markets. It's not like uh, you know, I think the first thing you'll notice is our solution isn't specific to just one vertical market. Uh, you, you you have K through 12. You have higher ed. You have uh, uh, from federal government, uh, uh, industry, and uh, you know construction, so it's all over the map. And, and the reason is, it's not so much that uh, you know Formata is is specific to these vertical markets. It's it's uh, organizations like IMS that are able to help help companies solve problems with the Formata solution. So. For example, you know, IMS is able to go out, you know, and if you have a very frustrating paper process, they're able to work with you with Formata, and that's how we end up with our with our uh, customer base is through organizations like IMS. 
so the, the biggest thing is with, with our solution is how do I overcome the perception of a form costing a penny? And uh, you know, with, with our solution, what you'll see, AIM did a report a couple years ago, and uh, what they determined was the actual cost of processing a form on average is seven dollars and forty cents. So if you have an organization enterprise wide that through the course of a year processes one hundred and fifty thousand forms at seven dollars and forty cents, you're actually spending one point one million dollars. Now, I would love the opportunity to work on one point one million dollars uh, opportunities every day all day long, but you know I think what what you're going to see is even if you're talking about 10% of that, or if even if we push the outer limit to 20% of that, uh, you're going to experience less than a year for an ROI. So you're going to see real quick that uh, there's there's a quick ROI in deploying Formata, and you're also going to uh, streamline a lot of the processes. A perfect example is North Kansas City Hospital. North Kansas City Hospital uh, deployed Formata basically, you know, in their back office. Uh, accounts payable. Uh, they had some uh, employee forms. They had some uh, uh, HR onboarding um, uh, scenarios, and they ended up saving thirteen thousand hours in a year, and that equated to an annual savings of three hundred thousand dollars. So. There's definitely uh, cost savings as well as you're going to be streamlining your processes with Formata. And the way you do that, Formata is comprised of really four areas. Number one is a design tool. And the exact same design tool that I use and, and IMS uses is the exact same design tool that also ships with the, with the solution. So you're going to have the same design tool that we use. and you know, depending on how you know how much you want to take on yourself, you're going to have all the tools to do that. Now, we also have the resources to support you. So, if you have a a, a situation where you just don't have the bandwidth to uh, complete the project, then you know we definitely have the professional services to back you up. The other thing is the ability to capture information. So, this really works two ways. If I have known and verified information in the, in the databases, well, then I'm able to autofill fields on the form. So this way, I'm not having to, every time I go through an onboarding process, I'm not having to enter my name, my address, my social security number, so on and so forth on every single form. I've already presented that and provided that to my company once. So I, you know, with, with the Formata solution, any time I bring up a form, it's going to have all that information already pre-filled for me. Now what's really great about the Formata solution is that any information that the user puts on the form, we treat that as usable, discrete data. And we can turn around and send that to databases. So any of that information, you don't have to manually key it in. So not only did you initiate the form electronically, but you also, any of the information that was captured on the form can automatically be in, entered into your databases. So you don't have to have somebody sitting there keying in every single field into another database. That can be automatic. And the way we accomplish that is with web services, uh, ODBC, JDBC, there's a number of uh, integrations that uh, we can connect to your different databases. So you know, that's certainly a real time saver in completing the form as well as getting the information and using that information that you gather on the forms. The other wonderful thing about Formata is our way of routing forms. So no matter what, once, a, once somebody has uh, initiated a form, you can have rules on how that form is routed. For example, I apologize. I, I've had a really bad cough, and every every now and then it comes comes up on me quickly. So I just wanted to sometimes I have to mute and cough real quick. But I apologize for that. But at any rate, uh, as far as our routing goes, uh, that can be predefined. 
So it can be predefined. Like when I complete an expense report, it goes directly to my manager. He's able to review it and approve it, and it goes to accounts payable, and they reimburse me. Now, it can also be routed a little differently if I exceed a certain threshold. So for example, if I do an expense report and it's under $3,000, boom, my manager approves it and accounts are payable. However, if it exceeds three thousand dollars, then it would go to our uh, it would go to my manager, but then it would go to our president, and then to accounts payable. So it can be uh, routing can be adjusted based on certain thresholds that you put in. The other thing is routing can be uh, adjusted based in, or I should say conditional based on fields selected on the form. So I may select a certain field on the form that may initiate a, a, a business rule that says, hey, if this particular uh, new user is uh, selected, then make sure that you automatically send them an email to a link that they'll be able to complete this other form of, uh, that includes information that's required. So there's a lot of different uh, ways, but all of that can be predefined. It's automatic. Just think about back in the day, you'd fill out a form, You'd stick it in an inner office envelope, and it would be, you know, once it left your office, you had no idea where it was going. With with Formata, you know that that's going to be routed to the appropriate people. The other thing that's uh, really good, we already have, these are just a handful of the content management systems that we already have connectors established and built for. So you know, even if uh, even if you had a content management system that we didn't already have a connector, that only takes four to six weeks. So it's really you know we have it down uh, pretty solid right now. It's a short turnaround time. But uh, you know, if you happen to have uh, a different uh, uh, content management system, uh, you know, please don't hesitate to uh, let us know because uh, you know I, this is in a comprehensive list of them. But uh, we certainly have uh, a number of uh, connectors to many of the content management systems out there today. So that, uh, that hurdle will be, is eliminated already for you. And then uh, we also have our passport system. And in fact, uh, rather than talk about this, I can actually get in and, and start demoing some of this uh, functionality within our passport system. So this is the initial uh, uh, page of the Passport system. And what's great about Passport is it is in addition to Formata. So now Formata, all of its uh, routing of forms as they're completed, if you want to call it workflow, uh, that is all accomplished via email. However, once you add Passport to the picture, you now have a dashboard. And what I mean by that is you have a single view of the status of any form, as well as you have a single location to go for any form that is required. For example, if I go into my forms and my inbox, I'm able to see all the forms that have been sent to me that are pending my approval. It looks like I better get busy approving some forms. So I can sit and review each and every one of these and then just scroll down and, and then go ahead and sign them and approve them and submit them. So those are forms that are pending my review and approval. Then I also have forms that are in process. And uh, for example, right now I don't have any, any forms that are waiting to be processed. Everything is either waiting for me to review or they've already been completed. Uh, another example as far as these forms go is I can also filter things. So I can take any of these fields and I can, I can filter them and I can search for 
for uh, forms based on name, and so there's a very various ways of searching for fields for forms. But the best part about this uh, passport is that I have a single view if I want to get my inbox in process, and and as well as any form that I've been involved with that is actually completed. So I get real time status of where that form is. And a perfect example of uh, uh, of the in, in process uh, window is that just think when you had those uh, inner office envelopes and you stuck that form in there, you wrap the string around a little button and you wrote somebody's name on it. Once it left your office, you had no idea whose desk it was sitting under a pile of paper. With the Formata solution, you're going to know right away who it's waiting for, who it's waiting on. So, you know, if you, if you had a purchase request that you were waiting for that new computer, you would just simply, uh, and you saw that uh, it was waiting for uh, David Wilding to finally sign off on it, and a couple of weeks had gone by, you could go ahead and call David. But we could also um, build in escalation. So if, for instance, if somebody doesn't act on a particular form quick enough, then we can resend it to them or or we can send it to a manager, you know, whatever the case may be. But there's, depending on the urgency and the, that you want to uh, identify of the particular form and getting it completed, you have a lot of different options available to you. The other thing is, like, let's say, for instance, I'm a purchasing manager and I want to go on, on vacation. Well, I have one or two choices. I can either work throughout my, my vacation or when I get back, I'm going to be inundated with all those purchasing requests that came in while I was while I was away. There's going to be a lot of upset people. But what we've done is we've included an out of office. So if I'm out, of, if I know I'm going to be on vacation for a week, I can click out of office, and all of my all the forms that would normally come to me. To be, re or to be reviewed and approved are going to be redirected to David Wilding. Now, that pretty much wraps up the My Forms. Now we have the eForms catalog. And with the eForms catalog, this is a single view to any form that I have access to. For example, you know, based on your, your uh, login credentials, and that could be um, with uh, Active Directory or LDAP, that would identify which folders you have access to. Now, I have access to a lot of things, but most people aren't going to have access to uh, HR administration. A lot of people may only have access to employee forms. So depending on what the case is, um, will determine what you actually have access to as far as forms go. But the best part is I have a single location that is available 24-7 to the latest and greatest version of form. So now, it, with using Passport and using Formata, you have now implemented a tool that's going to enable you to achieve forms version control. Because people are only going to be able to access the latest and greatest version of forms. So what I can do, uh, just kind of to, to demo the solution, is we could go to a uh, onboarding type scenario, and I wanted to show you within our uh, onboarding. I can show it from uh, two ways. First of all, I'll show it from the HR administrator, and then I'll I'll go ahead and and show it uh, from the uh, onboarding new hire candidate. So what the uh, HR administrator would do is they would go in and they would click HR administration and uh, you know what we want to do is set up this uh, new hire candidate be, uh, be hired. Now there's lots of different ways that you can add them, uh, add their information in here, but uh, I'm just going to pull up a name. I went ahead and did this a little earlier so I didn't have to fill in all these fields during, uh, during this demo. And I added uh, added myself. And basically, what this will be from this point going forward is known and verified information. So any field that I launch or that I, I uh, want to use, it's going to be pre-populated with all my information. 
the other thing I wanted to show you is that because uh, we have the ability to go out into different databases like the HRIS system, I can go ahead and rather than type in different titles and, and, and departments and run the risk of things not being consistent, if those things are already set up in our HRIS system, then I can go out and search for them and automatically select them from there. The other thing I wanted to mention about our forms, too, is you can require fields or you can identify those fields as mandatory before a particular form is submitted. So now, in this case, as the HR administrator, now that this form has been, you know, this user, this new hire candidate has been entered into the system, we're going to go to the email. And what we're going to see is the new hire candidate is going to get this email. And this can say anything you want it to say. I mean, however, you know, whatever verbiage you want to use in here, if you want to put a logo in here, you can certainly do that as well. But all, you, all the new hire candidate would do is click here, and they would uh, retrieve their information and enter a user ID and password. I know too many passwords nowadays. I can't keep them straight. There we go. And the first thing you notice is all that known and, inf and verified information that the uh, HR administrator had entered into the system, it's presented right here. And based on my title, all the appropriate forms required for my title were automatically selected and presented to me. So now, let's say we need our W-4. I just click on that. And the first thing you notice is everything was already completed. All that known and verified information, even that I'm married and everything, is, is automatically completed for me. So all I have to do is fill out the uh, pertinent information specific to this form. Now what I'm trying to do is I'm clicking and I'm trying to enter eight, but it won't let me because this particular field you can only enter a zero or a one. So I can hit eight all day long and nothing's going to happen. But the minute I hit one, it goes ahead and enters it. I hit zero, not a problem. One, OK. Here, I can hit six if I want. I can hit any number, really. Uh, one, one. Now, if you pay attention here, it's automatically calculating this for us. So now I have all my dependents. and it totals 11, and it puts it down here as well. I can go ahead, and maybe I want an additional $75 taken out of my paycheck. Uh, and then that's it. That's all it took. I didn't have to enter my name and social security number and address all over again. In this case, we have this set up to capture a wet signature. And the first thing you notice with the signature is the uh, uh, date and time stamp. So now we hit submit, OK, and that's the end of it. So as a new hire candidate, that form is awaiting approval. I could go ahead and do the 401k. Again, all the known and verified information is already completed for me. So I just have to say a new enrollment. And just for uh, time's sake, I'm not going to sign up for anything. And in this case, I'm going to go here, here. And instead of a wet signature, this one's going to use a user ID and password. Submit. There we go. I don't know if you noticed, but once a form is submitted and signed, this all changes color. So we call that a signed uh, color. So we go here, we go here, we go refresh. So again, this is the view of the new hire candidate. And they were able to get this via the email that we sent them that was automatically sent to them. So you can see these two fields are sitting awaiting for approval. Now, I 
I'm going to put my HR administrator hat back on, and uh, you know, it's, it's Monday morning. I come into the office, and uh, I go in. Oh, let's see what those new hire candidates did over the weekend. I mean, let's let's take a look at this John Holly Castro. All right, that John, he's really on the ball. He completed two of the forms here. Let me uh, let me take a look at what he did. Okay, I can review it real quickly. Excellent. He's, that John's a great form completer. Uh huh. There we go. So I've approved that one. And uh, yes, let's go in and take a look at this one. I'm the HR administrator. Okay. Well, all right. He did a great job completing this form too. Everything looks uh, thoroughly completed. There we go. So that's all done. I close this window. Good stuff. I hit ref now again. I'm the HR administrator right now. Okay. I hit refresh, and now that changes from awaiting to complete. Now I'm going to take that HR administrator hat off for a minute, and I'm going to go back to the uh, the new hire candidate, and I'm going to hit refresh. Now they can see that those two forms have been completed as well. So that's uh, you know it's a back and forth, uh, but it, it's certainly identifying any of the uh, forms that have been completed. So now they know that they only have to focus on on the rest of these forms. Now one other thing I wanted to show you based on um, the HR. Whoops, I just go on here. So in this case, I'm the HR administrator again because of the title. All of these particular forms showed up as being required, and that was all predetermined. If I would have picked, um, oh, I think it's this one right here. There's only a handful of forms required, so you know, really, you know, that can be all automatic, and that can be set up in advance. And uh, you know, just just wanted to identify that for you. So you know now that's an onboarding process. I mean, I'm I'm sure you have lots of other uh, requirements for forms, and the beauty of it is is the the built-in workflow or you know predefined routing. So you know, for example, I can very easily uh, launch a a purchase request, and within that purchase request, it's going to request you know require certain information to be completed. And uh, I just simply go through here, complete the information, and uh, I, I can just say same as uh, just a checkbox because the shipping address is the same as the uh, requester's address. Uh, as we already saw a little earlier, these things can uh, automatically uh, calculate numbers for us. Uh, I got to do something that we can calculate uh, to. In price of 50. There, that's more of a calculation. There we go. I can add the tax in here. And uh, in this case, rather than it may have to go to somebody that I want it to. So I can also, if it's not predefined, I can also select the next person that it's going to go to. So in this case, just so we can see it, there we go. And now I hit sign and submit. Oh, I did that a little too quick. There we go. And it's off and going. You see how the colors change because it's been signed and submitted. So uh, Basically, I'll close that. Okay. So that pretty much, uh, you know, wraps up as far as you know forms. I'm sure, you know, the the big goal and objective of of the uh, forms is to create an electronic form that has the same look and feel as a a paper form. This way. Users aren't aren't confused. They are easy. They can easily adapt to completing it. And, and I think a lot of the forms that I, I showed so far, I'm sure, are very familiar. So I just wanted to go here real quick because in, in my forms, you 
you can see that this particular form, and if I would have sent it to somebody else, it would it would have had their name in here, but it's waiting for for my other my other account, if you will, uh, uh, to go ahead and uh, complete that form. So we have that. Now I wanted to show you uh, a couple minutes here. I just wanted to spend uh, you know just to give you an idea on the design tool, and uh, with the design tool, I just want to open this. Go. With the design tool, you have lots of different options. I mean, you can go ahead and you can take a form and you can uh, you can import an existing PDF, for example. Uh, in this case, you know, maybe I have a, a W4, and uh, you know, I'm not going to sit there and recreate something that's already created in a PDF. So I'll go ahead and. Uh, Import that, and then I can go ahead and, and modify it. So pretty much any of your uh, Word document or uh, Microsoft Word skills. Oh man, I'm a year behind. There we go. 2015. Uh, I may want to. Uh, of course, I have to change that to 2015. Uh, maybe, maybe for whatever reason, I, I want. I'd prefer that to be a little larger. I'm just trying to show you some functionality. That's all. So if I do that, I need to just expand it a little bit, and uh, you know now I have the capability. Maybe I even want to change change the font uh, or the color and make it italic. So any of your, uh, as I mentioned earlier, your word type uh, uh, skill sets are going to be able to do here. Now, possibly you you want to create a form from scratch as well. Well, in that case, I would just go. Uh, Start with a, a clean slate here, and uh, I would go ahead and import a particular uh, a particular logo that I have on my on my uh, computer here. And let me just uh, put here. I'm gonna do demos. I'm gonna go to uh, There we go. So now that I have IMS's logo here, I can go ahead and also put it in my catalog too. And I'll explain that in a little while. So now every time I go to create a new form and I need a, uh, a logo, I could just go ahead and pull up IMS's logo every time. I don't have to reinvent that. It's just a drag and drop from this point forward. Every form I design, boom, I can do that. Uh, I can do check boxes. I can do uh, drop down windows. All those uh, any, all those times we have to put in our uh, city and, and state. Uh, we may want to uh, we may want to do uh, a calendar somewhere. Uh, possibly uh, do attachments just like we would do for an email. Now with attachments, I actually just have to do one other one other uh, thing here to enable it. Yes, yes, there we go. And uh, oh, I know what I want to do. I want to add some text. But uh, in adding that text, eh, actually, you know what? I'm I'm too lazy to reinvent the verbiage that our lawyers have already uh, approved and reviewed. So uh, rather than me uh, try and uh, have to send this back to legal, let me just open a document that they already approve. And uh, let's see. OK, here's one of their documents. Uh, there we go. I'm just going to copy from this uh, document with their approved verbiage. And I'm going to go here, back to the design tool, and I'm just simply going to paste that. That's it. I've already now all that text is there. Uh, I can certainly uh, adjust the uh, change the the font any way I want. Bold it, under italic it. Maybe I just want to do some of it underlined. And uh, those few words, I want to change the color. So those those are some uh, quick options. I can also uh, enter text in a field.
And of course, when it's all said and done, maybe I want to uh, draw a body image, and we ultimately want to uh, capture a signature. So that quickly, I have all sorts of stuff going on here. And the main thing I also have is a uh, I can go right away. I can go up here and I can run preview. So the first thing I see is is IMS's logo. I can go ahead and do hamburger, cheese, fries, uh, pop up calendar, click on a date. I can do a drop down of, of different states. Ohio. There we go. And then I can go ahead and do an attachment. So I got what an email. There's the verbiage. Here I need to add some, you know, enter some stuff. Uh, possibly I uh, I need to draw on this. and then when it's all said and done, I need to sign off on it. And uh, as soon as I sign it, you have the user ID and password. So those, those are the uh, an overview of the solution. I was going to just look on here to see if we have any questions. Lindsay, do we have any questions up yet? No questions yet, okay. Yeah, no questions yet, John. Okay. So if anyone wants to type in, if, if there's uh, anything additional that, that you want me to uh, show, or if you have any questions, you know, please uh, feel free to enter them here. Uh, what, what I can also do is, uh, you know, we can go in back into the uh, Passport solution because we're moving right along here with this demo today. So I think uh, we've pretty much established the, uh, the concept of the onboarding and how, the, how both the, uh, the new hire candidate as well as the HR administrator can be up to date on what's going on. Uh, as we talked about a little earlier, we have the capability of doing our workflow via email or via the uh, the passport with, with with the inbox. So the reason why I bring that up, and and, and I'm a perfect example. I I don't very rarely do I have to complete forms. Uh, so, you know, if somebody sends me a form, it, you know, and I have to review it and approve it, it, I should say, it's very seldom that someone sends me a form that I have to review and approve. So, and, and with all my travels, if I get that in an email once in a while, it's really not a, not a big deal. So, it, email works for me because I could be going through the airport, I can go ahead and open that email on my iPhone, I can click on the link. I can review it and I can approve it right there and I'm done. Now my boss on the other hand, he has uh, seven or eight of us reporting into him. So he's inundated throughout the day with, with expense reports, uh, PTO requests, uh, purchase requisitions. So you know he has uh, he has multiple forms coming to him and so he, the last thing he needs is more emails. So at the end of the day or early uh, the next morning, what he'll do is he'll just go into his inbox and he'll just knock them out, you know, one by one and just and just get them done that way. So that's one of the you know but, you know both both sides of the coin on I should say the the email of uh, responding to forms and reviewing them and approving them via email as well as being able to review forms uh, using Passport. So I would say the other area too is um, you know we looked at a couple of the forms. Uh, we, we talked about the uh, uh, purchase request, and these are forms. So if I'm an employee and I need to update a form, 
I can very easily just go in here and select the uh, W4, and I would I'd be able to update it with my more current information if uh, you know, we had a, had another child or something. And then, uh, of course, if I wanted to take time off, I can just go in here. And as you can see, it's already pre-filled pre with my information, my manager's information. And I can just very easily uh, fill these out, complete these, uh, these dates that I want. And I'm just throwing in some numbers. This is just the way we happen to have this form set up. Not the fastest in uh, demoing, but uh, it works. Now, what I wanted to demo real quick here is I mentioned at some point uh, in the presentation where you can require fields as mandatory. I forgot to identify the reason for my time off, so it automatically pops up and tells me, "Hey, you need to complete this." The big advantage of making field required fields mandatory is that how many times have you received forms that were incomplete? And think about it. You know, I talked about all this ROI stuff, but just think about how much time is wasted going back and forth getting all the information required to really complete that form. So if you receive a form and it's not completed, and you have to go back to those people and until you play telephone tag and you ultimately get all the information, it, it could be another it could be another couple of days. So in this case, now I select the uh, person paid time off vacation, and now it's going to let me go ahead and enter my user ID and password. And submit. So that's uh, you know those those are all the examples. Uh, you know we, I I could certainly uh, demo more uh, more forms. And oh, we do have a question. Let's say that the form has two part process, and the second step requires an outside party to complete. Can the form be printed so they can do their part? Um, actually, you could have it built in uh, into the uh, workflow or the routing. So once you complete your your part of it, it's going to know to email it to me. So you don't have to print it. it you can just email it and send it to them. So they're going to get it electronically. They're going to be able to complete it electronically. And then they can hit their submit button, and it's going to go to. You know, I'm, I'm not sure you know what all the all the routing is that you have set up, but you don't have to print it. You can send it to them electronically, and let and they're going to have the capability, just like uh, that new hire candidate. And in fact, it, here's that's a perfect example. What I did, uh, uh, I did a recently did a presentation. And uh, on the on the form, if they if they selected uh, uh, a new a new uh, what was it something about the, a new access, well then an email was automatically sent out, and that email had a link to a form that they had to complete. So they they would they automatically got that form. And I I would venture to say that you would. It would work the same way in your scenario where you would complete your portion and then it would automatically be emailed to that other person that needs to com uh, complete the second part. And once they completed their part and hit submit, it would go to you know whoever, wherever it's uh, set up to go to. Um, any other questions? Okay. I'll show one more thing. At the, usually it's a question, and that is uh, we can also on these forms, oh, i got to hit PowerPoint slide mode. There we go. 
We can also have forms set up so depending on, whoops, what did I do? Oh, there we go. Depending on what you select can determine what's presented in the next field. And what I mean by that is if in this case I hit the downtown, downtown location and then I hit this drop down box, as you can see here, there's a whole bunch of options that are, are available. However, if I were to hit the Broadway location, then there's only a handful of locations presented. So you, you have that you know, flexibility and functionality built into this uh, available to you as well. And, you know, and, and I will say this is that the Formata solution is very flexible. There's a lot of different options. So you know, sitting with the right people, doing the right discovery, and, and identifying your requirements or the problems that you're trying to solve, yeah, there, there's more than one way to accomplish things uh, using the Formata solution. So that's all that I have to present today. Mike, do you want to? Uh, yeah, John, thanks uh, very much. It was uh, excellent. Really appreciate you guys taking the time to uh, show us all the uh, overview of the Formata product. Uh, folks, we um, will be following up with some uh, uh, email information from Olivia. And if you have any questions, uh, certainly feel free to get back to us uh, after the uh, webinar. We'd love to uh, uh, help you with uh, any of your eForms questions and uh, see if we can uh, be of service to assist you in the future. Uh, at this point, is there anything else, uh, John or Chris, that uh, we need to present? No, so it's just uh, um, here's here's Olivia's contact information. If uh, if you need any additional follow up, right. I'll just leave, I'm going to just leave that up on the on the screen here. Thanks, Jen. And uh, I'm just going to check one more time. No more questions, huh? Well, if you uh, go ahead and uh, let Olivia know, and we'll we'll certainly follow up with you that way too. Great. Okay. Thanks, folks, for attending. We really appreciate it.